Hello everyone, it's Chemigator. Welcome back to another episode of Synthesis Studio. Today, I'm gonna take a deep dive into one of the most interesting and challenging questions about rearrangement in organic chemistry. It might just be the hardest question you've ever seen, so let's jump right in. Here you see the tropilidine skeleton, which is a 7-membered ring containing 3 alternating double bonds and 1 sp3 carbon atom. Person and co-workers studied the pyrolysis of the tropilidine skeleton having two methyl groups on its seven position and one methyl group on the three position. They wondered how this structure responds to rising temperature. Surprisingly, they observed that a peculiar rearrangement occurred during the reaction. As you can see, the methyl group on the three position migrates to its neighboring carbon atom at the two position. The question asks you to provide a reasonable mechanism for this rearrangement. The essence of migrating groups in organic chemistry goes back to Woodward and Hoffman's theory. According to their theory, a substituent moves from one part of a pi system to another part with simultaneous rearrangement of the pi system. This is also called a sigmotropic rearrangement. Actually, there are three classic types of migration, named 1-3, 1-5, and 1-7 sigmatropic rearrangements. For example, consider butene containing an alkyl substituent in its free position. Under elevated temperature, the alkyl group migrates to the terminal carbon of the double bond, and at the same time, the double bond shifts its position. It looks like the alkyl group walks through the double bond. Now consider cyclohexadiene as another example. In this system, this carbon atom bears a hydrogen and a methyl group. Due to the presence of conjugated pi bonds, we can expect migration in this system. So after increasing the temperature, the hydrogen atom migrates to this carbon atom of the double bond. You can imagine the conjugated pi system acts as a railway, where the hydrogen atom is transferred through it. Notice that migration of hydrogen is preferred over the methyl group because it has a spherical shape and a smaller size, so the energy required for migration of hydrogen is less than that of the methyl group. Now let's go back to our case. Considering Woodward and Hoffman's role, pause the video and try to propose a mechanism for this migration. As you might guess, this is not just a simple migration. Notice that there are three alternating double bonds with 6 pi electrons. So it is susceptible to a pre-cyclic rearrangement involving 6 pi electrons. In this case, the pi electrons attack this double bond to create a new sigma bond, and the remaining double bond shift their position, leading to the formation of a 6-membered ring fused to a 3-membered ring. This critical intermediate is called norcradiene. Now it's time for a 1-5 sigmatropic rearrangement. Notice that this carbon atom bearing two metal groups is gonna migrate. So this carbon-carbon bond should be cleaved, shift its position, and attach to fifth carbon atom through the conjugated pi system, along with repositioning of the double bonds. Keep in mind, we consider a longer path for this type of migration when a conjugated pi system is involved. Another important point is that this rearrangement is a concerted process, which means there is no intermediate and it occurs in one step. What's happening here is that the location of free membered ring shifts with the help of the conjugated pi system. Now what's gonna to happen is this carbon-carbon of the free membered ring is cleaved, leading to reformation of the tropilidine skeleton. But this time, the position of the substituents has changed as a result of the rearrangement. Until now, we've completely answered the question with a clear mechanism. But let's explore the mechanism slightly deeper. Actually, the free membered ring can undergo another 1-5 shift, just like the previous step leading to this intermediate, where the free membered ring is now closer to the methyl group. After cleavage of the sigma bond and reformation of the tropilidine skeleton, 
Another isomer is formed, in which the methyl group is positioned adjacent to the geminal methyl groups. If you look at the whole mechanism, it's like the free membrane ring is walking through the sex membrane ring skeleton. Remember the railway analogy. With the help of the conjugated pi system, the free membrane ring can shift its position along the carbon skeleton, leading to different structural isomers. Such a dynamic mechanism is called walk rearrangement. Personally, I'm a big fan of this kind of fluxional behavior of molecules. If you wanna explore this concept in depth, I suggest watching this video in which I've explained a very beautiful example of such fluxional behavior. Now let's expand our discussion to a stereochemistry and have more fun. For this, let's go back to the classic 1-5 migration. This time, I'm gonna explore orbital interaction during this rearrangement. Notice that the origin of migration goes back to the homo and lomo orbital interactions. In other words, we can take the homo molecular orbital of the group that's gonna be transferred, and the other side, the lomo orbital of the pi system. No matter if you take the lomo orbital of the migrating group and the homo orbital of the pi system, the result is the same. In our example, the hydride is gonna migrate to the terminal of the double bond on the other side of the pi system, which contains two conjugated double bonds. If we draw the molecular orbitals of the pi system, we can see that the lomo orbital includes two nodes involved in this rearrangement. The important point is that the homo orbital of the carbon-hydrogen bound and the upper lobe of the p orbital in the terminal double bound are in the same phase. As a result, the hydride migrates to the same phase of the pi system without inversion. This type of shift is known as suprafacial. Now consider a 1-7 migration. The pi system in this process has three conjugated double bonds. Drawing the molecular orbitals shows that the lumo orbital contains three nodes, which is one more than in the previous example. As you can see, the homo orbital of the carbon-hydrogen bond and the bottom lobe of the p orbital are in the same phase. So the hydride adds to the bottom phase of the pi system. So inversion occurs during this migration. This is known as anterofacial, in which the stereochemistry of the migrating group is inverted. Now let's go back to our case. You know that the cyclopropane ring walks through the 6 membered ring by a 1-5 sigmatropic rearrangement. From orbital rules, it's clear that 1-5 migration is suprafacial meaning no inversion of stereochemistry occurs in the migrating group. In our case, both substituents on the cyclopropane are methyl groups. But what if they are different? Based on the rules, we expect that the stereochemistry of the migrating group remains unchanged. To clarify, let's look at the molecule from the top. There are two different substituents on the cyclopropane ring, shown by blue and red colored spheres. What we expect is that in each migration, the stereochemistry of the chiral center remains the same. But, the fact is, although it's a 1-5 migration, the stereochemistry of the chiral center is inverted in each migration. Actually, this specific 1-5 migration violates the orbital symmetry rules.